Monochrome cameras, regardless of what brand you are choosing from, are the choice of serious astrophotographers worldwide. Now by using a monochrome camera in conjunction with a filter wheel and a set of LRGB filters or a set of narrowband filters or even a combination of both, you will be able to capture a lot of detail and the ability to capture the emissions of narrowband giving you incredible results, in some cases comparable with the Hubble style images which we are aspiring to create. It's Gerald from Optic Central here. Today I've chosen the QHY183 Mono CMOS camera. Now I will go through the basic specifications and why this camera is really worth considering buying. The 183 camera is a quality product and the camera that offers a very high resolution. It has a back illuminated sensor as well. And the reason why you want to consider a back illuminated camera in astrophotography is because you will find that most CMOS cameras have their sensors orientated with the light receiving surface transitions and all that facing the light. And in this case, there are times you can get reflections of light bouncing off the circuitry. However, with back illumination, the circuitry is on the underside of the surface that faces the light. And so this reflection of the circuitry has been removed. Remember, it's all about achieving more light that we can get onto the sensor. And the more light we can get, the better the quality of your final image. So with the unboxing, um, the QHY183M, it comes with a pretty strong box. We'll take off the phone. The camera is pretty secure in here. I'll need to get the the camera out from this. So I've got the camera out and um, you can see it's just quality. Here's another box. Here's your power cables. A nice looking USB cable. Very good quality actually. An SD4 uh, an adapter. And that looks like it must be another power adapter, I guess. And there's a desiccant tube here as well. The QHY183M has an extremely high quantum efficiency, known as a QE. In this case, it is 84%. That means the data is absorbed at a very fast rate and comparable to other high-end CMOS cameras out there in the marketplace. You know, the cooling system on the 183M can be taken down to a very cold minus 45. However, this is based on the ambient temperature around it. For example, on a cold winter's night of a, say 10 degrees, it will mean you can send the temperature down to minus 30 degrees. To get this temperature, there are usually substantial current requirements that are needed. However, with the QHY183M, it uses less current, and you are able to get to the designated below zero temperatures quickly, and without using too much of the camera's resources. The weight of your camera is important too, as it can cause balancing issues when you are wanting to balance your telescope. A well-balanced telescope is crucial when it comes to auto guiding and long exposure photography. The 183M weighs in at 450 grams. And for a camera of this size, it is relatively lightweight. Out of the box, the look and the feel of the 183 is impressive. The camera is robust and is very well built. The 183M has a USB 3 connector 
and a port that allows you to connect a desiccant tube when required. The width of the body of the camera is 77 millimetres in diameter and 81 millimetres long with the T-thread dovetail adapter to the end of the telescope of 11 and a half millimetres, you'll have a total length of the camera that is 82.5 millimetres. Now the CMOS sensor is located uh, between 17 to 17.5 millimetres from the end of the dovetail adapter. The 183 driver was straightforward to install and works within the ASCOM platform. If you're using programs like SharpCap, Nina or Sequencer Generator Pro, make sure that the drivers are correctly installed so that the programs you're using will connect to the 183M. The gain settings of the camera to use it at its optimum settings is based upon recommendations by QHY and other experienced photographers who recommend that Unity Gain is selected. And for the 183, you'll find that around about 11. The download speeds from the 183 to the PC is very fast as it uses hardware binning. You know, hardware binning produces a much superior image as hardware binning comes from the source of the camera, whereas software binning comes within the capturing software that you are using. Calibration frames such as dark and bias frames are a very good quality. There is a slight amp glow emitted by the 183M, but this is something that good calibration frames will remove. There may be issues such as frosting on the sensor of the camera, with the CMOS camera sent down to very low temperatures, so desiccant tablets that absorb the moisture are used. With the 183M, there is a heated optical window that comes into play. The pixel size of the 183M has a pixel size of 2.4 microns, which gives the astrophotographer a nice field of view of 0.62 arc seconds. The 183M is a lot more sensitive to other cameras I've used. Standard exposures of 200 seconds can now almost be halved to 150 second shots. I've attached some histogram captures in uh, Sequencer Generator Pro. Just take note how the histogram is severely clipped using 300 second exposures. And now, note how nice the histogram looks with 150 second shots. Still with the same detail, but you have much more better result with a shorter exposure. So by using a lot of exposures at 150 seconds, it will address the issue of clipping in the highlight areas and highlight that the 183 is a very sensitive camera. The 183 is very sensitive to UV IR light because the window on the sensor is clear glass. I would recommend using a UV IR filter to block out that light. So the pros, it's a great design. It's lightweight, it's got precise cooling temperatures down to minus 45 degrees. The cooling system is very quiet, probably the quietest cooling I've experienced. It uses less current than other cameras that I've used. It has very easy drive installation. It has a fast download speed and a very high quality efficiency of 84%. The cons, it's got amp glow. However, most cameras have this, and if, if you use good quality calibration frames, the amp glow will just disappear. Uh, the M43 thread on the camera needs to be a little bit longer. There have been reported issues of the camera not tightening onto the image train. There's no electronic shutter. So when you do your darks, it has to be completely 100% dark. Specifications. It's got a two-stage TE cooling with fan assist, so your camera isn't sent to a sudden drop in temperature, which can lead to dew forming on your sensor. The sensor size is 13.3 millimeters by 8.87 millimeters. It's 20 megapixel. The pixel size is 2.4 microns. It's back illuminated. And as we've said before, the quantum efficiency is 84%.
the read noise is 1 to 2.7 electrons and the frames per second is 19 frames a second at 4K HD video and that's using 31 frames per second. So in summary, well the camera's performance was brilliant and exceeded my expectations. Mind you, I had to change the way I normally do my imaging acquisition. But overall, I am truly impressed with the result I got. Monochrome imaging requires a lot of time and effort and substantial learning and the processing of the final image you have to capture can be quite daunting at first. However, once you get it customised with the process, you will be rewarded with your effort. Optic Central have a wide range of mono cameras to choose from and the accessories to go with your choice of optical equipment. We have experienced astrophotographers to help with your decision making. So please subscribe to my channel, click on the bell to get notified of the new content on our videos, and from all of us at Optic Central, we wish you all clear skies. Yeah, that'll do. Good, thank you. That, that'll do. Yeah. Whoa. Oops.